I, I, I do. Uh, do you think the current models for policing are working in the city? I think that we really need to uh, have a greater connection between law enforcement and the community at a very granular level. And I think we had that. We were building that for a while, and it kind of faded away, and we've um, kind of reverted to this model where, where it's a very reactionary model, and that generates confrontation and conflict, and I don't think that provides any solutions at all. I, I do. I, I just want to ask you the same question I asked Gonzalo. Um, are the current models of policing that we're using in Providence working, and you know, what would we change? Sure. So. Providence has been going down a path towards community policing for about 20 years now, and it is the right path. Uh, and so uh, I support continuing to invest in community policing. We've made progress. We need to make more progress in terms of hiring more diverse officers, um, getting officers back into the community, walking the beat, building a relationship with neighbors, getting to know the communities and specific neighborhoods and districts that they serve in. Uh, but then we need to also explore alternative response models. And I was very encouraged to see the mayor and the city council put money towards a model so that we can send things like mental health workers and addiction specialists to certain calls because not every crisis call needs an officer with a gun. Right, right. And I just like uh, a question that popped in my head as you were talking about what we do about poverty. A lot of the things you mentioned that we're trying to do are reactions to poverty, but they're not really things that will alleviate poverty or bring people out of poverty. For instance, you know, after school programs and stuff like that, that's only to keep kids who are already affected off the street, more or less, yeah. but how, what do we do about poverty as a whole? It's a bigger question, right? Well, I would say improving education, the quality of public education from pre-K, mm -hmm. uh, gets at the root causes of poverty. That changes a child and then adult's trajectory for life. Right. And I was proud to work for Governor Raimondo when we put ourselves on the path towards universal pre-K, right. and the city followed suit as the first city to make a pledge for universal pre-K. Things like that do, in fact, get at the root causes of poverty. But then there's other things that we have done and will need to continue to do, like uh, access to food insecurity and health inequities, you know, the lead poisoning that's frequent in this community. If you look at some of the heat maps for health inequities, communities like this are bright red spots, which shows that young babies growing up in this neighborhood are going to have health outcomes adverse to the rest of the city. And so investments in like lead abatement, improving the standard of living and the quality of housing stock in this neighborhood, all of those things do in fact get at the root causes of poverty and I'm committed to continuing and expanding those programs. Uh, there's a lot more I'd like to ask, but I don't yeah, want to Yeah, I mean, we could day. go for hours. Yeah, right? I know, Thanks exactly. Yeah. Any Thank closing you. remarks?